The views and opinions expressed on the program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programs. And do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the Satanic Temple. Comrades, said the great Archangel, no, we will not conquer the heavens enough to have the power. War engenders war and victory defeat. Satan has grown into a powerful figure. The struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit. I believe somebody that's doing this habitually is influenced by satanic uh, pressures. Satanic influence. Satanic influence. Satanic influence. Satanic influence. And welcome to Satanic Influence, also known as Modern Satanism. I'm your host, Reap. I will be your host until the end of the broadcast. And I'll probably be your host in the next podcast, too. <laughs> Chances are. We've got a pretty good mix this podcast. I'd like to, in advance, thank Tom Spotnik for hanging out and uh, giving his opinion or chiming in every once in a while throughout the podcast. Right, Tom? I'm so stupid. That's right, Tom. <laughs> you couldn't be more right. And I'd also like to thank technology and the voices generated by that for co-hosting the podcast. I think you'll see what I mean as we go along. I'd also like to make sure I don't forget to make mention of another podcast about Satanism. What do you know? Deferred Gnosis. They're on their second podcast. Make sure you check them out. And you can find them at deferrednosis.com. That's D-E-F-E-R-R-E-D-G-N-O-S-I-S dot com on the second podcast and I think that there is some interesting material there. I don't agree with everything they say but am I supposed to? Really? Maybe one of these days if uh, I get lucky we can uh, exchange opinions with the gentlemen who do that podcast. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. That'd be interesting. It'd be an interesting conversation I think. <laughs> and if you'd like to hear more of your humble host you can hear me on Apostasy Now. I'd like to thank Mr. Dragonbeard for having me as guest on the podcast to talk about the Satanic Temple and my Satanism and the reason why I joined in with the Satanic Temple and um, some views on other things. You can find that podcast at apostasynow.com. You know how to spell that, right? Okay. There'll be links to these podcasts in the podcast description at modernsatanism.net if you need them. In other news, hey, the Satanic Temple has some things going on. I think a statue or something is going to be finished on the 15th of November from my understanding. And the humble spokesperson, Lucian Greaves, from the Satanic Temple, is going to be appearing at Skepticon in Missouri on the 21st through the 23rd, along with my very good friend, PC Myers, who hates my guts. <laughs> so that should be interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Hope he doesn't mention my name around PC Myers. PC Myers gets upset about me because he's a huge dick. Speaking of dicks... I'm so stupid. <laughs> Okay, I think that's about it. Um, if I think there's something else, I'll add it in. Let's start the podcast. And now we bring you the Modern Satanism Podcast with your host, Reap. You are going to hell. Ha, ha, ha. Though he told authorities the devil made him do it, Satanists disapproved after a man allegedly shattered a stone copy of the Ten Commandments last week. The man is accused of running his car on Friday into a controversial six-foot-tall granite tablet of the biblical edicts erected near Oklahoma City's capital. He then left his car standing along with the monument, which, as photos show, was smashed asunder through the second commandment. Thou shalt not take thy name of the Lord in vain. He walked into the federal building on foot where he made threats against President Obama and the federal government. Uh, the man told Secret Service agents that the devil made him wreck the religious monument, which was placed at the Capitol in late 2012. He also said he was mentally ill and had stopped taking his medication. Duh. He has been detained at the med mental health facility for evaluation. Condemnation came quickly from two sources that have rallied against the monument, ACLU of 
Oklahoma, and the Satanic Temple. The ACLU filed suit last year against the presence of the monument on state property, and on Friday said it would keep fighting for its removal because it feels it's a violation of the Constitution. But the organization was also outraged at the apparent act of vandalism. The Ten Commandments constitute a strong foundation in our clients' deeply held religious beliefs, said the Oklahoma ACLU. The Satanic Temple has demanded to have the monument of its own erected next to the Judo-Christian one, and it still wants it, but only alongside the Ten Commandments, it said in a statement posted. If our monument stands at the state capitol, we want it to complement and contrast the Ten Commandments with both standing unmolested as a testament to American religious freedom and tolerance. The Satanists could well have that wish fulfilled, but only in part. Governor Mary Fallon has vowed to have the Ten Commandments monument rebuilt. The Satanic Temple statement is as follows. Following reports that a stolen car was driven into the Ten Commandments monument in Oklahoma City, the Satanic Temple condemns the action as deplorable. This morning, October 24th, the Satanic Temple received reports that a driver in a stolen car rammed into the Ten Commandments monument at Oklahoma State Capitol and fled the scene. As of this writing, all that seems to be known of the culprit now in custody is that he is bipolar, claims to have been motivated by voices in his head, and he allegedly identifies himself as a Satanist. Expressing concern for the individual's apparent mental illness, TST spokesperson Lucien Greaves also also wasted no time in assuming, assuring the public that such rogue, destructive actions enjoy no support whatsoever from the temple. Greaves states, The Satanic Temple was appalled to learn that the act of dest- destructive vandalism laid upon the Ten Commandments monument in Oklahoma today. As many are aware, we are seeking to have a Satanic monument erected alongside the Ten Commandments and only alongside the Ten Commandments. We do not want our monument to stand alone. If our monument stands at the state capitol, we want it to complement and contrast the Ten Commandments with both standing unmolested as a testament to American religious freedom and tolerance. We hope that by respecting religious liberty and allowing our monument to be displayed, Oklahoma will help merely the any animosity between differing perspectives, not to cultivate them. Ever since we began construction of our state statue of Baphomet, we have received many angry letters from self-identified Christians who have sworn to destroy our monument immediately following its erection. We have also received no small amount of letters and support from self-identified Christians who approve our efforts to assert our American constitutional values of religious liberty. Zealots acting under the label of any religion are zealots just the same. And we hope that everyone realizes how crass and deplorable even the suggestion of actions such as that witness today are. Reports currently maintain that the culprit was acting as behest of voices in his head and his actions seem to be a product of a personal disturbance. Vandalism finds no support within the satanic community. To be clear, the satanic the Satanic Temple will not seek to erect its monument unless the Ten Commandments is restored. Oklahoma City has the option to wait until the ACLU's case regarding the legal stat- stat- status of the Ten Commandments is resolved before it permits its replacement. However, if the Ten Commandments is immediately reconstructed, our monument will be ready for unveiling quite soon. And that monument will be ready for unveiling on the 15th of November at uh, this time. So there you go. Dude was whacked. <laughs> when voices in your head tell you to do stuff like that, you got a serious problem, and it ain't Satanism. You're listening to Modern Satanism. Ten quick responses to atheist claims. One. You don't believe in Zeus, Thor, and all the other gods. I just go one god more than you, and reject the Christian god. The problem with this idea is that, gods such as Zeus and Thor are not comparable with the biblical understanding of God. There is a vast distinction between all of the ancient Near Eastern gods and the god of the Bible, said Professor Lanix. They are products of the primeval mass and energy of the universe. The god of the Bible created the heavens and the earth. 2. Science has explained everything, and it doesn't include God. Science cannot answer certain kinds of questions, such as what is ethical, and what is beautiful. Even when it comes to questions about the natural world, which science does explore and can sometimes answer, there are different types of explanations for different things. God no more competes with science as an explanation of the universe than Henry Ford competes with the law of internal combustion as an explanation of the motor car. 3. Science is opposed to God. There are certain conceptions of a God that might be opposed to science, but not the Christian God. There might be certain kinds of gods that are invented to explain things we don't understand, but they're not Christian. If we are being offered a choice between science and God, it is not a biblical concept of God, said Professor Lanix. 
The biblical God is not a God of the gaps, but a God of the whole show. The bits we do understand through science and the bits we don't. Among many leading thinkers, their idea of God is thoroughly pagan. If you define God to be a God of the gaps, then you have got to offer a choice between science and God. 4. You can't prove that there is a God. This kind of statement ignores that there are different kinds of proof. Can you prove that there is a God? Asked Professor Lanex. In the mathematical sense, no, but proving anything is very difficult. The word proof has two meanings. There is the rigorous meaning in maths that is very difficult to do and rare. But then there is the other meaning, beyond reasonable doubt. That's the kind of proof we can present, arguments to bring someone beyond reasonable doubt. For example, rational arguments such as those from philosophers Alvin Plantinga and William Lane Craig, the personal experience of Christians, and the witness of the gospel accounts in the Bible. 5. Faith is believing without any evidence. Christian belief has never been about having no evidence. The Gospels were written to provide evidence, as the beginning of Luke's attests. The end of John's Gospel says, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. But believing without evidence is a common notion of faith at present. This definition is in the dictionary and believed by many, said Professor Lanex. So, when we talk about faith in Christ, they think that's because there is no evidence. John's Gospel shows that Christianity is an evidence-based faith. 6. Faith is a delusion. I'd no more believe in God than I would in the Easter Bunny, Father Christmas or the Flying Spaghetti Monster. These ideas have been made famous by people such as Professor Richard Dawkins. The only thing they are good for is mockery. Statements by scientists are not always statements of science, said Professor Lanex. Stephen Hawking said, Religion is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. I said, Atheism is a fairy story for people afraid of the light. Neither of those statements proves anything at all. They're all reversible. What lies behind all these delusion claims is the Freudian idea of wish fulfillment that we believe what we hope to be true. This works brilliantly providing there is no God. But if there is a God, then atheism is wish fulfillment. 7. Christianity claims to be true, but there are loads of denominations and they all disagree with each other, so it must be false. Why does the existence of denominations imply Christianity is false? It might imply that Christians have very different personalities and cultures, or even that Christians aren't good at getting on with each other, but not that Christianity isn't true. There are all kinds of different kinds of teams in football, but they all play football, said Professor Lanex. 8. The Bible is immoral. If you want to question the morality of the Bible, what basis does that morality have? There can be a serious contradiction within atheist criticisms. Dawkins wrote, in a universe of electrons and selfish genes, blind physical forces and genetic replication, some people are going to get hurt, other people are going to get lucky and you won't find any rhyme or reason in it, nor any justice. The universe that we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at bottom, no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. If this is true, then why does he question the morality of anything? Dawkins says faith is evil, said Professor Lanex, but at the same time he abolishes the categories of good and evil. That doesn't make sense. 9. Surely you don't take the Bible literally. Some atheists and a few Christians have a very black and white idea of how to interpret the Bible. You either have to take it literally or chuck it away, they think. That ignores the reality of language and how it reflects truth. Jesus said, I'm the door, said Professor Lanex. Is Jesus a door like a door over there? No. He is not a literal door, but he is a real door into a real experience of God. Metaphor stands for reality. The word, literal, is useless. 10. What is the evidence for God? You can debate the existence of God until the cows come home. It can be very interesting, especially when you go into the detail and explore the subject in depth. But for an atheist, they might be missing the point or avoiding the real issue. Professor Lennox advises to ask them the most important question. Suppose I could give evidence for God. Would you be prepared right now? 
to repent and trust Christ. 11. Every one of those answers is bullshit or rhetoric. I feel a little more stupid after talking to you. Thanks for nothing. I'm so stupid. Okay, I guess atheists have been declared the enemy. Listen to this by uh, our good friend Tom Respot Dick. I mean Nick. Definitions revisit Dr. Tom Eric Respotnik, Ph.D. In a world where much seems to be distorted, one simply needs to examine verbiage to determine the confusion that seems to permeate the occult. So I will attempt to help those of you along from first grade to third. Let's look at definitions and let's examine them from an academic viewpoint. Um, I'd like to interject here. By the way, Tom, um, we had an ap- academic on the uh, podcast. It was on the last podcast. His name was Jesper Peterson. He actually really does go to school, or did go to school, and he teaches school now. And he's an expert in Satanism, not a pretend leader. So you might want to um, refer to that before you write your next blog. Atheism. By definition, not by those who would misconstrue it. Disbelief or lack of belief in the existence of God or gods. While atheists seem to be so hell-bent on debating and creating a disbelief in a god. Um, um, I don't mean to be rude, but I have to interject here again. Um, atheism isn't about creating a disbelief in God. It's about science and how science hasn't you can't prove that there's a God by using the scientific method you might want to look up scientific scientific method before you write your next blog Tom, okay, thanks again it is certain that they mostly desire attention as I see it, no belief is a belief in no belief I'm sorry, once again Tom but that, that, that doesn't make any sense really it sounds kind of dumb and while that seems rather nonsensical, I see as a thice that science, while a strong base to argue, can neither prove of disprove God. And it is not who starts the debate, who automatically can raise the flag of victory, as neither side can disprove one another. In truth, most atheists who argue, and I know many have no knowledge of science to provide an accurate argument other than cut and pasting some quote from a scientist and running off claiming a victory. Uh, Tom, I've got to interrupt again, sorry. Um, you, most, you don't know most atheists, you might know some, and I'm sure that there's like a, a small circle of atheists you know, but there's a lot of atheists around the planet, and um, I would bet anything you want, anything you want, it's you don't know most of them. In fact, I would um, say it would be pushing it to say you know a few. Okay, um, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. I also find most atheists, while putting up an argument often worded well, or with sound knowledge of Christianity, they often will fail miserably against a well-informed theist who is not of Christianity. Okay, Tom, um, I'm sorry, but... It's not theist, it's theist. You're not theist. So you might want to pronounce that different the next time you, you read one of your blogs. Okay, it makes you sound kind of dumb. As atheists often study limited materials on theism and are most off one-dimensional in conver- conversations against theists, and that is Christianity, theism. By definition, not again by those attempting to twist the meaning. Mainly atheists belief in the existence of a god or gods, especially belief in one god as creator of the universe, intervening in it and sustaining a personal relation to his creatures. Often this is used by the majority of people who believe in an actual deity. Even Christianity could use this terminology as well as Satanist Satanism. By definition not someone who claims to be one, 
or defines it as modern Satanism, since modern Satanism even is not a great descriptive as modern, refers to current or a period relating to today. Okay, sorry again, Tom, but the modern describes the type of Satanism, so you can... It kind of does change the definition because theistic Satanism is different from atheistic Satanism. That's why there's descriptive words, you know, like a four-door sedan versus a two-door sedan kind of deal. It describes the type of sedan it is. They're both sedans, but it's a different type, you know, or a two-wheel drive car or a four-wheel drive car. And I mean, it's really not that hard to figure out if you just think about it, Tom. So you might want to think about that for a couple of minutes before you, you write your next blog. Okay. I'm, I'm glad I could help you with this. Okay. Go ahead. But modern Satanism does not capture any definition that changes the use of the word. Truth is the worship of Satan typically involving a travesty of Christian symbols and practices such as placing a cross upside down. Well, again, an argument can be levied that those who do not practice Satanism is the way of the word is defined is as bad as those practicing atheism and calling themselves satanists. Words do have meaning and those of us who are satanists wealthists anyhow I guess are better informed or perhaps smarter. Um, because you think differently that makes you smarter perhaps? Um, I think perhaps maybe that just makes you um, a little ignorant maybe. I'm sorry I have to keep interrupting but I, I just want to make sure we get things clear. The argument that religion is defined by the personal path, not the word, is more of an atheist argument and again weak at best. The problem I see if the wrong people are controlling words and meanings. Um, Tom, most people's religion is defined by their own personal beliefs. I don't know. Maybe you need to, to socially interact with more people or something and ask them the questions instead of just assuming you know the answers because I think that maybe your assumptions are a bit um, biased and maybe completely wrong in this case okay go ahead sorry and I think it's rather interesting that Satanists seem to be interested in following like herd animals the definitions of Satanism by atheists like the Satanic Temple or even the Church of Satan, where atheists pretend to be Satanists wield no power and messages that do more to confuse than educate those seeking the path of Satanism. People rally around broken falsehoods and falling for everything seem to rule. The day often people in Satanism wonder why people refuse to teach them anything, especially those who have knowledge of the practices of Satanism. Well, this is why. Why would I or anyone else who actually are educated enough have any desire whatsoever to deal with anyone who cannot grasp simple definitions? In the real world not some, only utopia. words do have meaning and until those people who dizzy desire some semblance of the religion called Satanism hold those misusing the words in contempt the religion people want to call Satanism will remain in discord. I think the atheists like it that way, and I in this piece now declare as one of the leaders of theistic Satanism that atheists are our enemy and deserve whatever penalties an enemy would encounter when presenting Satanists discord. I will leave these judgments up to the theists and penalties could I include the unknown in some circles harsh words yes because our deity fought for our freedom and we should be as passionate in our religion as any other religion or even like Islam wait a minute did you say your deity fought for your freedoms are you a Satanist or is this a George Washington thing I don't, I'm confused now. How did, Satan, how did Satan fight for your freedoms? I mean, he's not even real. 
where the enemies are dealt with in many ways. Satanism is a very young religion and was not charted by Lavi. However, today it is charted by those who swing the swords that slash the throats of the infidel, which is the atheist. One last definition, infidel. A person who does not believe in religion, or who adheres to a religion other than one, seem to work in Islam. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Written and posted by Dr. Tom Eric Respotnik, Ph.D. November 2nd, 2014. Dr. Tom Eric Respotnik is also an idiot. Okay, well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Um, let's break this down. First of all, I would like to say I find Mr., I mean, Dr., sorry, Dr. Tom Respotnik, yeah, like he's really a doctor. Not only a huge prick, a liar, an attention-needy child, um, I don't know, I could go on, but he's dangerous, and he's irresponsible, and he seems to want to be a terrorist, and to make the statement that what's that idiot say here satanism is a very young religion and was not characterized by levey however today it is charted by those who swing the swords that slash the throats of the infidel which is the atheist so yeah um there are people getting their their throats slashed and beheaded and tom respotnik seems to relate to those people wants to be one of those people wants others to be those type of people which i don't know where the fuck he gets off with that but that's just mentally ill is what that is. Nothing short of. And to call um, for a war or for declare atheists as the enemy who see. He will leave the judgments up to theists and penalties could include the unknown in some circles. So if anything does happen, Tom, hmm? so what if something does happen? What if some idiot, someone stupider than you, if that's possible, decides to, to do harm to an atheist because you suggested it? So it turns out that Tom Respotnik is not only an attention needy little whore, an idiot, an animal abuser, um, I mean, could the dude be any more of a prick? He obviously has no dignity, he has no self-respect, he has no respect for others, he has no intelligence, I mean, the, the way he writes is crap, and he's the leader of theistic Satanism, oh, not only that, but I don't know what kind of Satan he believes in, because when he, I interviewed him, he said that he believed in it as a, like a nature, a force of nature, now all of a sudden, he, Satan fought for his freedom. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. The guy is an idiot. He steps on his own tail all the time. He puts his foot in his mouth. He kicks himself in the head. He's just, he's a moron. He just goes around screaming sex offender at anybody who disagrees with him. I mean, the guy's got no argument. And the reason why I'm bringing attention to this is because you need to point out stupid people sometimes. And just to make sure that everyone understands and everyone's aware that this guy is a total idiot. His latest post, he's going to propose a statue in Oklahoma City now. So, he's got a copy. To put, he hates the Satanic Temple so much for putting up this statue that doesn't represent Satanism. He's going to put up one because he thinks he represents Satanism. He thinks his pathetic non-church represents Satanism now. Represents all Satanists. Or I don't know what the fuck he thinks. I don't even know if he knows what the fuck he thinks. Tom Respotnik. Tom Eric Respotnik, do everyone a favor and shut the fuck up already, all right? We all know that you're too much of a wuss to have a real conversation with anybody. All you can do is blah, blah, blah online, and now you're calling for people to do harm to atheists because you don't fucking think that they can, be, they can claim to be Satanists, and it's not your type of Satanism, like you own the fucking word. And you know what? Definitions change, you moron. You think words never change definitions? Do you think that they never evolve? You want everything to stay the same forever? I mean, how limited can your thinking be? How simplistic can one person be? I guess we're finding out through Tom, aren't we? How anyone can make such a fool of themselves and just do it over and over and over again is beyond my comprehension. It, it's, it like defies the rules of nature that anyone could be this stupid and just dumb and foolish and so many words so many it's it's laughable and sad all at once fodder that's what he is fodder you are listening to the modern satanism podcast and now for the musical portion of our program prides of satan by sam coffee and the iron lungs
That's a tune called Brides of Satan from Sam Coffee and the Iron Lungs. You can find Sam Coffee and the Iron Lungs on Facebook, or you can find that song on Amazon and iTunes. I want to thank them for uh, allowing me to play that song, because I like it, for the podcast. I think they're a Canadian band. Canadians sure like me a lot, don't they? <laughs> for some strange reason. It's good, right? And his name is Satan. And therefore, by his name itself, we understand the very nature of who Satan is. He's an adversary. He, my friend, therefore, comes against you in a very cunning manner, and he knows exactly what he's doing. It's the kind of thing that you can take hold of and say there's truth in this, and this is not just something that's been added to embellish anything. To what? To what? Cancel stupid. Letters to a Satanist. By Lucy and Greaves, October 27, 2014. You describe the Satanic Temple as atheistic Satanism. Is there any place for occultism and magic? One of our tenets holds that beliefs should conform to our best scientific understanding of the world, and we should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit our beliefs. We don't feel it is our, or anybody's, place to dogmatically dictate metaphysical interpretations regarding the nature of the universe to our membership, much less the rest of the world. The Satanic Temple specifically fights for a secular environment in which all people who adhere to our basic values can express their beliefs as they wish. If some of our membership subscribe to ideas of ethereal forces, we don't feel we have anything to say about that so long as it doesn't conflict with one's ability to consider the best available scientific and empirical evidence regarding any given subject. Such beliefs, like all beliefs, should be approached with reasonable agnosticism, but one should not pretend that a failure to know anything with 100% certainty means that equal probability can be assigned to every proposition. This usually results in some form of God of the Gaps argument, where admitted holes in scientific knowledge are filled with speculative and admittedly improbable and often supernatural assertions gravitating towards the anomalous or rules obscure exceptions can be an interesting intellectual exercise so long as one's thinking remains open to the possibility of correction. It shouldn't be entirely serious, but it shouldn't be taken as a mere joke. I would prefer to refer to our satanic occultism as satanic pataphysics. In the tradition of the French pataphysicians of the 19th century, Letters to a Satanist can be found at the Detroit Metro Times website, metrotimes.com. Now back to modern Satanism with your host, Reap. Here comes Pat Robertson. Danger. Warning. Danger. Infinite wisdom ahead. I think it's called wisdom. <laughs> Maybe not. Do we have the same power that it took to raise Jesus Christ from the dead? And if so, where is that in the Bible? Well, uh, he gave his disciples the authority uh, to heal the sick, uh, to raise the dead. I mean, that was part of our, our uh, power. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God is almighty. He is almighty. And uh, he gives us that power. And Jesus said, you say to the mountain, you speak to the dead person. He called on Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the dead man came up out of the grave. We have the same power. He's given it to us. It's in the Holy Spirit. But we need to be in touch with him. We need to behold him. We need to be uh, submitted to him. And that power is there. We just aren't using it. All right. There's one thing to want to persuade somebody to believe like you do. 
Uh, that's what Christianity is about, to bring the gospel message, say this is good news, and we'd like you to accept it. That's one thing. There's something else to take the arm of a government to force somebody to do something that is against, is contrary to their religion. And that's what these homosexuals are trying to do. They're trying to force people who are Christians to marry them or else face jail, to make cakes honoring them or else go to jail, and give their servants over and divulge their innermost thoughts or go to jail. Now, that's the kind of thing we're dealing with. These people are terrorists, they're radicals, and they're extremists. No Christian in his right mind would ever try to enforce somebody against their belief or else suffer jail. Now, they did that during the Inquisition. It was horrible. It was a black mark uh, on our history. But it isn't being done now. There's no Christian group I know of anywhere in the world that would force somebody to do something contrary to their deep-held religious beliefs or else face criminal penalties. But that's what the homosexuals are trying to do here in America. And I think it's time pastors stand up and fight this monstrous thing. I mean, if the gays want to go out and do their gay sex, that's one thing. But if they want to force you to accept it and, and uh, solemnify it by marriage, then that's a different matter. And it's an infringement on people's religious beliefs. And what's being done in Houston is a gay, the, the woman they elected is a homosexual. She's a, she's a lesbian. And that's her, she's trying to force pastors to conform to her beliefs. It's wrong. This uh, onslaught of uh, homosexual behavior uh, that is being forced on us by the Supreme Court of the United States is having deadly consequences. I was afraid it was going to happen. It has happened now in Idaho. Ephraim has that story. Pat, two ordained ministers in Idaho could face crippling fines and even jail time for refusing to perform same-sex weddings. Donald and Evelyn Knapp run the Hitching Post Wedding Chapel in Coeur d'Alene. City leaders told the couple a non-discrimination ordinance requires them to perform ceremonies for all couples or face legal consequences. The ordinance includes a religious exemption but excludes all public accommodations and the city considers a chapel a for-profit company a public accommodation. The couple could face a 180-day jail term and a fine of $1,000 a day, Pat. Well, if I were that couple, I'd get ahead of the of the curve. Uh, get on an airplane and leave Idaho or, or get in your car and drive across the border into Montana. Get out of that state and, if need be, close your chapel down. I mean, just get out ahead of it because this is outrageous. But I was afraid this will happen. And then the next thing you know, it'll be a church. The church uh, is going to be forced to... Uh, you can see the Monsignor of some uh, Catholic church being forced to perform a gay marriage. Uh, you think I, I'm joking? Uh, that's what's happening in Idaho. You, you say it's a wedding chapel. It's not a, it's not a church, but nevertheless, it's a chapel, and these apparently are ministers. Well, uh, a church is going to be forced to do things like that. I remember talking to Cardinal O'Connor in New York about Georgetown, where the school was forced by the city of Washington uh, to provide money, resources, to support a gay club in the uh, student body and to give them telephone, to give them printing, to give them office space, etc. And I said, Colonel, what would you do? And he said, just as clear, he said, I'd close the school down. Now he's talking about Georgetown University, Cardinal O'Connor, wonderful man of God in charge of the, the New York uh, diocese. And uh, he said, I would close it down. And I think those guys in Idaho had better get out of Dodge now before it gets any worse. The devil has tried to destroy people. He wants to kill babies. Why do you think we've got such an incredible culture of death in our country? Why do you think that we've killed over 50 million unborn babies? Who do you think's behind all that? This isn't just human. It is demonic. Satan wants to destroy our babies. He wants to destroy our babies. Just like Pharaoh set the word to destroy the Hebrew babies, and it's the same thing all the way through. I want you to declare your liberty. Now, will the devil try to let you go? No, he won't. Will he come back and try to get you? Yes. So you have to be strong. I've got a little book that I'll give you. It's called Angels, Demons, and the End Times. 
uh, make that available to you. And I'll also have a teaching on what happens when you come to the Lord and what it means to be born again and what it means to have an exchange life. 72 minutes of very intense teaching. I'll give it to you free. You don't have to pay anything. For, just call in. It's a toll-free number. But just say, I am free. On this Halloween, I gave a black eye to Satan. I am free in the Lord. It's him! Satan! Raise your hands! It's Satan! The church! In Vatican City, in his homily on Thursday, Pope Francis said that the devil is more than an idea, and in order to fight him, we must follow St. Paul's instructions and put on the armor of God which protects us. In this generation, like so many others, people have been led to believe that the devil is a myth, a figure, an idea, the idea of evil. But the devil exists, and we must fight against him, the Pope told those present on the Vatican St. Martha's guest house for his daily mass on October 30th. He turned to St. Paul's letter from which the day's first reading was taken and in which the apostle warns against the temptations of the devil, telling Christians to clothe themselves with the armor of God so they can resist. Pope Francis said that a Christian life requires both strength and courage and needs to be defended because it is a constant battle with the devil who tempts with worldly attractions the pla passions and our flesh. From whom do I have to defend myself? What must I do? He asks, saying that St. Paul tells us to put on God's full armor, meaning that God acts as a defense, helping us to resist Satan's temptations. Is this clear? No spiritual or Christian life is possible without the need to resist temptation, he observed, explaining how our battle is not with small trivial things, but rather with principalities and ruling forces of this world, which are rooted in the devil and his followers. We must constantly be on guard, he said, noting how Paul tells us it's not me saying it, it's the word of God telling us this, but we're not all convinced of this. You got that right. Pope Francis then recounted St. Paul's description of the armor of God, of which the apostle says there are different types. Hmm. One for going out in the evening, one for the morning, and one for casual. The apostle also urges to stand firm with the truth as a belt around your waist, the Pope observed saying that the devil is a liar and that in order to defeat him we must always fight with the truth and with faith in God. Like St. Paul says, our Father in God is a shield to defend ourselves against Satan who doesn't throw flowers at us but burning arrows intended to kill. When the last time you heard somebody getting killed by a burning arrow? Life is a military endeavor. Nice. Christian life is a battle, a beautiful battle, because when God emerges victorious in every step of our life, that gives us great joy, a great happiness, the Pope continued, saying that our joy lies in the fact that it is the Lord who is the victor within us, giving us the free gift of salvation. Free gifts. I'd rather like a cheese grater instead. However, Pope Francis also cautioned, we're a, all a bit lazy, aren't we, in this battle? And we allow ourselves to get carried away by our passions by various temptations. This is because each one of us is a sinner, he said, telling those present not to be discouraged, but to have courage and take strength in the knowledge that the Lord is with us, except for when he's not. Yeah, he really said that. It has Satanism, and it's modern. Called it Satan's master stroke of genius. <laughs> hey, Pope Francis has given a special blessing to con a convention of exorcists, praising them for the helping those who suffer because of the work of the devil. The International Association of Exorcists brought some 300 members to Rome to discuss the impact of the occult and Satanism, which many of them fear is on the increase. The Pope, who often speaks about the fight against Satan in his sermon, said by treating people who are possessed, exorcists demonstrate that the church welcomes those suffering from the devil's works. Speaking to Vatican Radio, Dr. Walter Cassioli, a psychiatrist and spokesman for the International Association of es Exorcists, warned of an extraordinary increase in demonic activity. This guy's a psychiatrist? Sounds like he needs one. He said that this makes it even more worrying that the number of people who are turning to these practices, which are damaging psychologically, spiritually, and morally, is constantly growing. The association which brings together Catholic priests and psychiatrists, that sounds like they, <laughs> a good match, but not quite in this way, was founded in 1990 and given formal recognition by the Vatican in June. What? Took that long? 
Dr. Cassioli said that too many people today undervalue the temptation to engage in ordinary demonic activity, which leaves them unprepared to fight off greater attacks by the devil. Ordinary demonic activity. What the hell is ordinary demonic activity? In societies marked by rushing and superficiality, exaggerated individualism and secularization, he added, the battle against evil and the devil increasingly is becoming an emergency. At the convention, Father Aldo, some name I can't pronounce, blamed the phenomenon of Halloween for a spike in demonic possessions in October. Oh, my. The organization's emergency number receives hundreds of calls over this period, around 40 a day, especially from parents who fear that their child has been initiated into the occult. He added, many say Halloween is a simple carnival, but in fact, there is nothing innocent or fun about it. It is the antechamber to something much more dangerous. There are always more evil rituals, animal sacrifices, desecrations of cemeteries, and thefts of sacred bones at the time of the 31 October. Participating in Halloween is like an initiation into the occult, he said. For the sex, it's the best sex. It's the best time for the, of the year to recruit new members. From here, the door to the devil can be opened. For this reason, it's necessary for us to speak out and not play down the danger. To replace the dangerous festival, the Catholic Church in Italy have now launched the initiative Holy Holy Ween. <laughs> Holy Ween, Batman. By, while most people are seeped in zombies and horror, we put our doors and windows alight or an image evocative of the saints. And there will be masses, prayer vigils, and worship to celebrate the saints and victory of good over evil. At the conference, Pope Francis warned the exorcists that they must treat those possessed with kindness. He wrote in a message, Those who perform this particular ministry in conjunction with the bishops must work with love and kindness from the church towards those who suffer because of the evil one. Last year, Pope Francis appeared to cast out a demon from a wheelchair-bound man who said he was possessed by the devil. The Vatican insisted the Pope didn't intend to perform any exorcism, and it released a statement that said he simply intended to pray for someone who was suffering who was presented to him. The man later said that Francis had failed to banish the demons from his body. However, Francis placed his hands on him, and he was able to walk again, he claimed. Jesus fucking Christ, are you kidding me? The Exorcist Association was introduced in Italy by veteran exorcist Father Gabriel, Gabriel Amarth, who to share experience as increased interest in occult practices as boosted demand for exorcisms. Father Francesco Barmonte, an exorcist with the Diocese of Rome, told the official Vatican newspaper that the Holy See's approval of the group is cause for joy for the church as a whole. Exorcism is, in fact, another form of charity, he said. The ancient rite of casting out Satan and his demons from the souls of the possessed has been carried out in the Catholic Church for centuries. But the practice of exorcism saw a revival of interest following the 1973 film, Guess What? The Exorcist, and other popular film and literature references. Are you fucking kidding me right now? That was so much bullshit, my cigarette went out while I was reading it. <laughs> That's how much bullshit that was. <laughs> I'm going to have to do an exorcism on my fucking cigarette now. Thanks a lot, Pope. Thanks a lot. When, when, when are we ever going to get past this medieval bullshit, occult, fantasy bullshit? Please. i got to find that number so I can call about the exorcism thing <laughs> and see what they say. I'll try and find that. And that is going to bring the Modern Satanism Podcast number 10 to a close. I want to thank Technology for co-hosting the podcast with me. And I want to thank Tom Spotnik for his uh, input. Canto stupid. Thanks, Tom. We, uh, we got that point. Thank you. I want to thank you for listening. And I want to thank you ahead of time for sharing the podcast with uh, whoever you want. Share it with people you don't want to share it with even. I want to encourage you to go to the Satanic Temple website. See what's going on there. Make sure you donate to the cause if you can. Help support Satanism. Help it grow. Oh, I want to thank Sam Coffee and the Iron Lungs for allowing me to play their music. You just might hear some more from them on the podcast. And uh, make sure you go to Amazon and pick up some music from those guys. Help support good musical talent. Right? Right. And you can help support the podcast if you'd like. Not that there's any talent involved, but <laughs> it would be appreciated. You can go to modernsatanism.net to do that. There's something else I was going to tell you too, but I can't remember what it is now. Maybe I'll remember by the time the next podcast comes. In the meantime, hail Satan.
I'm so stupid. 